Uh, save for um, 2004, this organization hasn't gotten out of the second round since the Stanley Cup back in the late 1989, and fans are climbing for a rebuild. Like After this type of season, do you anticipate sort of a fundamental shift in how this organization runs its hockey operations, given there hasn't been that real playoff run in, in close to 20 years now? Yeah, we're all dying for a deeper playoff run, there's no doubt about it. But, you know, we can take a deep breath here. And, and kind of, and that's what Don's going to do and take a look. And you're going to look at both, you're going to talk to the players, and you're going to do a deep dive in the analytics as well. And, and before you overreact, you don't want to underreact, but you want to overreact. Because you know what we have? We have a Vesna nominated goalie. I, I would keep him next year, and I can't wait to see Jacob come back and play next year. Keandre Miller. Heedle. Oh, Worked it across to the forehand with a shot. Marks him. And the score! Sneaks through. And then it's jabbed in by Gustafson. Three points, gets the puck to Sandberg, and here comes Connor. He over the line with a shot, scores! Kyle Connor sneaks one through. Jacob. And, and we've got a really strong defense. Connor with Cal to the line. It's away from him. Inside six minutes to go. Third period kept on side by Riley Smith. Drop pass. Malkin with a lane. Scores! And Yeti Malkin. 4-1. Dylan Dubé off the boards and out. Larkin cut it off just outside the line. And back they come quickly to break it. In front of the goal. Larkin scores! Top corner. Nice shot. 3 nothing. Larkin comes in to help. And now it's worked out by Raymond. Down the wing. Larkin again. Passing over. They score! It's that line again. 96 kick. Passion is shot to the ball. Quickly ahead. To break it, he's got two. Shoot, scores! Oh, Rock puts it up the boards, and now a two on one. Corrali works it in with Ross Levin. Scores! Shot. And we've got a great, we got a, we got a great lineup. The elephant in the room is that they brought a guy in. To pay him ten and a half million dollars, and we haven't mentioned his name in ten minutes when we've asked about game breakers. Because no, everyone I feel not. like is walking on eggshells around it. You give a guy that much money and you make it all signing bonus and you lock him up until he's nearly forty and you can't buy it out and you, there's no way to get rid of it. Are you are expecting a game breaker. Yeah. It ain't happening. In a weird way, I kind of feel for him because he has to be wondering where did my game go? I was a 100 point player. Points. I was a, I was an all-star. I was a star forward in this league. And right now, I'm now into another season where I don't know where my games go. I, I don't know if, you, if you'd only seen him in, in a Flames jersey, how could you even imagine you 82 never points? Never mind, you, you've got another, add another 33 points to get to 115? Like, how the fuck can yeah. he do that? This guy? No, Turnover it's... machine, soft on the puck, loses every puck battle, like low percentage pass all day trying to be pretty. What are we doing? And I feel for him because when you sign that deal, there are expectations that come with it. And those are going to cripple him because he is not anywhere near a $10.5 million player. More on the Phillips front. What happens when former Flames play the Flames? Right. Generally, Ryan, a former Flame who goes to another team and then plays against the Flame enjoys a certain level of success, often resulting in a goal. First to connecting. Phillips now on the counterattack. Here's Milano. Still has something left with him. They score! Phillips gets his first NHL goal. And set up by Milano. It's a one-goal game. This guy is a flame. The only way he's not a flame is if somehow he's denied an opportunity to prove himself at the NHL level. And that, that lays at one man's feet. That's it. It's only Daryl. Everyone else in the org wanted them to play more than three games by the time he'd finished his 24-year-old season. They literally played Nick bleeping Richie ahead of this guy down the stretch. Even when, like, what are we doing here? Good for Nick. Hey, Big Nick. Ooh. See Big Nick. So Nick Ritchie with a chance to win it and keep the Flames playoff hopes alive. Ritchie stopped by Charles, trying to tuck it in 5-0, and Charles shuts the door.
Nazem Kadri just hasn't looked like himself. I don't know. You know, watching that Columbus game, I'll go back a couple. There was two seam plays on the power play where he was whiffing on pucks. Like, you're, okay, you can whiff on one. You can't whiff on two. There isn't a guy you can put down a pen for 30 on this team, Noodles, and that's horrifying. Uh, and Nazem Kadri's 33. What if he just doesn't have it anymore? He wouldn't be the first guy at 33 that couldn't hang. Like, he's 33. Yeah. There's six years left. 33. There was a situation last year, and even if you hated the coach, they played a team, the Chicago Blackhawks, they win and they probably make the playoffs. Nazem was less than non-effective. He was a huge detriment and probably cost his team that game and, and a Stanley uh, uh, playoff berth. So before we start, you use the word not me. I'm not allowed to ever use the word rebuild. I'm not allowed to ever use the word rebuild. I'm not allowed to ever use the word rebuild.